Kirkuk is my hometown. As a teenager, I had to escape Saddam Hussein's terror, and ever since lived in exile in Europe. For the first time, I am now back trying to come to terms with the violent past of my country. According to latest human rights research, Saddam Hussein's henchmen murdered more than 250,000 people over the past 25 years. That's without counting the casualties of wars. In other words, every year Saddam was in power, an average of 10,000 innocents got killed. I was lucky. I escaped. But I am still struggling with my own nightmare. I was about 14. I was coming out of a cinema, seeing Superman film. I was very happy. I loved films. I loved movies. And on the way coming home, I decided to come to Chaykhana, this place, my local tea house, to have a drink and play a, a little bit of domino, a game of domino, with a friend of mine. And when I sat down here, and I called for a drink, a Pepsi. Suddenly, my hand was grabbed. I looked up, and there was a guy. His name was Ahmed. He was an Arab. He was a Mukhabarat, Saddam's man. And I started to shake because I knew this was really bad news. This Mukhabarat guys used to come with a car, a white Peugeot 404. And whenever this car came to my district in Rahimawa, they never went away from it without taking a couple of people. And the people they took away, we never saw them again. So we knew the ride on that car was the final ride. I had so many stories about people tortured in the Iraqi prison by the Mukhabarat, by the secret police. And uh, I immediately was thinking, I am really too young to die. First of all, they changed my name and they called me bastard, son of the bitch, dirty shit could. And then they told me that I was working in the underground movement anti-Saddam, making propaganda against Saddam Hussein. And I was the head of the cell. My heart sank because I then realized this was deep shit. I was scared. I must say, I was very, very scared. going back to the same place now. This is where I was kept by the Iraqi secret police. She says she's a refugee and she's living here now. So somebody is using this place. I'm just asking him about the entrance for the... Uh, there was a basement where they kept me. I would like to see if I can get back to the basement. I just wondered how can they they actually live in this place. This is a cursed place and
Look at this. One thing I've never managed to get out of my mind. The image of these graffitis written by so many young Kurds brought in here, tortured to death. And just look at this one. I prefer today to die in the prison in this cell than become a servant of the occupiers. It says, to remember me, I was known as Paula. On 13th of July 85, I was arrested. Today, I am waiting for my execution. It says, I entered this cell with my family and I am only 13 years old. And it's in Arabic. Saddam didn't spare anybody who opposed him. Kurds, Arabs, Turkmens, Christians. Of course, the Kurds mainly because they were the ones who opposed the most. God, I have only you. Please, God. I did the same. I begged God to come out. I begged to survive. But I, I lost all my faith in God after what I have experienced here. There is no God. If there was one, it would never allow things like this to happen on our planet. I remember when I was pushed down into the basement, about 10 minutes later there was this shout calling my name. Look if you can see a hand. Don't give up to these bastards. Don't give up to them. He said, I've been here for two years. Resist, resist. And he was like, my saviour in a way, because I just remembered his words, resist. I was brought into a basement. It's here. I was not given a chance to go down the steps, and I was pushed down all the way. spot in this place 30 years later I spent one whole week in this room I would spend the night in the basement and then in the day they would bring me out this room and they pulled me up upside down with my head down and one with a cable very heavy piece of truncheon a truncheon started to hit at the bottom of my feet and I screamed I really screamed I switched it off they must have hit me at least 
50, 60 times, and then they throw me on the floor, drag me outside in the main hall, and they then would say, run, with your feet swollen, the feet covered in blood, and, and you didn't want to put it on the floor, whatever. You just wanted to keep it away from the floor, but they would force you to run on it. Run, 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 and if you fall, they would come and kick you and punch you and hit you. They seemed to enjoy it. That's what it was so sick about it. They... What do you want from me? I was saying, I, I have not done anything. Every time I said I didn't do anything, I have not done anything. I don't know what you're talking about. I was tortured even more. It was a, a deal. You confess, they were saying. You name two people, we're going to bring the two people in, and you can go free. I was named by somebody under torture. They were saying, yes, we have a witness, and they brought in one guy, a local. I knew him. He wasn't a friend, but I knew he was local. I knew he was from Rahimah. Saber, I still remember his name. He knows I have not done any of this. And I said to him, Sabir, you know me, don't you? Uh, come on, tell them. He said, yeah, you did it. He pointed at me and said, you belong to the underground movement. You make propaganda anti Saddam Hussein. I could have killed him. Is that guy? How could he just turn up and say, Yes, you did it? They said to me, See, he can do like he did. He named two people and we let him free. And you do the same, we let you go free. No, I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. You'd rather kill me, but I wouldn't. On the fifth day, I was getting very weak. I had my teeth wobbly. And then an officer walked in on his own and he just whispered in my ear, Fuzzle. the name of my oldest brother. Fuzzle was very rich. He was a building contract and he managed to buy me out. He bought my life and saved me from Saddam Hussein and his Monsters. Many innocents lost life in these rooms. And I'm talking as if this was the past. But right now, in many countries around the world, this is happening right now, where people are being tortured. For God's sake. In the name of this bloody humanity we all belong to, let's finish with it. We've caused enough destruction, enough misery. I'm leaving this place in the hope that this is the last... Thou the bird that more than two fifths passed in physical people, but the over.